Hello, ladies and gentlemen. One question was asked to me recently that I have learned astrology so much from so many sources, but when I'm making a prediction, it never goes right. And then I asked that person, what are the principles that you are applying? So suppose he's discussing somebody's marriage. So then he's going and checking the dasha and then he's checking if they are linked to the second house, seventh house, eleventh house in the Lagna chart and then they are checking the Navamsha, they are checking the Saptamsha and then they are checking Nakshatras and all these things and then I'm like, wow, you just made a royal blunder. <laughs> and then he said, oh, but you are the one who have said all these, to do all these things. I said, yes, I told you, but there are so many things which you need to do before. If you don't do that, then I don't care. It's marriage or career or health or vehicles, whatever it is, you will make the worst blunders and then astrology will get a bad name okay so it is not 90 percent of the times it is not that our approach is wrong because ultimately predictions have to be uh, seen from the dashas and whichever houses the dashas indicate those things happen in our life but the thing is you have to first check certain parameters irrespective of any event in life what are those parameters if these parameters are well well placed if these parameters are good then what happens whatever predictions you are making they will actually turn out to be true why because it is like the base have you seen a building which does not have a good base what happens it collapses right and have you seen a building which has a very strong base which never collapses unless there's something very very bad so therefore we have to understand that certain principles will apply universally okay uh, so once we apply these principles according to time place circumstances only then you will see that your predictions are actually coming correct so which is the first uh, thing which you need to check the first thing you need to check is the sun actually why do i say sun you may think oh sun is important for career no it's important even for marriage because uh, sun as i see represents the kingdom so if sun is well placed or it is well supported even if it is badly placed but well supported by uh, the lords of the trines or the natural friends like the moon jupiter especially then what happens the person is very much eager to maintain his or her kingdom yes it's his or her it's the kingdom for everybody man or woman doesn't matter it's a kingdom <laughs> So the person is very eager to maintain the kingdom actually, okay? And uh, what is marriage? Marriage is like you have a partner and then you have uh, children. So then it's like your small kingdom. You see, you are managing the kingdom basically. So you are also like a king, but your area is small, right? So king doesn't mean you are only king outside. It can also mean inside your home or whatever there's a conception of somebody being related to you that is what the sun represents so therefore it's very crucial you check the sun for anything actually if you do not check ah uh, you're making the worst blunder actually i've seen people when they talk of marriage they will ignore the sun and they're like ah who, who is interested in the sun and i'm like who in the universe will ignore the karaka for the ninth house sun is the karaka for the ninth house the lessons which your father gives you so never ignore the placement of the sun. Okay. And yes, I forgot to say, if you are new to this channel, then you please subscribe to it. And if you are wanting to get a consultation, please go to my website down below. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. What is the next thing which you should look at? You guessed it, right? It is the moon. Moon is very crucial. Moon represents how you feel about your kingdom. So suppose you have so many things, but... You don't feel good. So what is the use of having all this? If you are like, ah, doesn't make much, doesn't make me very happy. So imagine you have something, but you, you are not happy. So you will not be very interested to maintain it, right? So therefore, the moon will tell you how much eager are you uh, to maintain the resources which the sun has given you. Or how much happiness can you get so it's counterintuitive if you are happy then you can get you, you you'll be naturally inspired to uh, maintain the kingdom which the sun has given if you're not happy then you're like ah, do hell with it 
who is interested in anyways so therefore the moon is very important because moon shows the mind and moon is the most important planet in vedic astrology because ultimately everything happens to the mind so for example you feel there is a problem in your career so that is external but if it is bogging you too much you might go into depression if a person is strong mentally then he or she may not go into depression they may find some other job or the depressed person may also find another job but that person will be thinking oh i lost that lost that lost that so the same event can affect a person differently depending on the situation of the moon okay so please do not forget that then the third thing this is huge this is the ascendant lord you must check why i am saying lagnesh because the ascendant lord will tell you how do you view the different areas of the horoscope okay so for example if the ascendant lord is uh, suppose uh, placed in the seventh house then you value other people much more actually so in that case what happens suppose somebody's third house gets activated and the person is uh, in youtube or you know all the social media platform i'm just giving an example then that person's videos or photos will go viral they'll get more views why because because the lagnesh is in seventh the person in the bhav chart okay not in the lagna chart and if you have confusion on bhav chart then please watch my bhav chart video go and type exotic astrology bhav chart <clears throat> So in the bhav chart it's in seventh or it's in third or eleventh. Then what happens? By by nature you are you have more tendency to be flamboyant and connect to people better. I have seen. So then your videos and your photos they will touch the minds of people more actually. Okay. So then a person's lagnesh ascendant lord may be in some other house and if he is doing something social media he he might take relatively more time to be successful compared to a person who has the ascendant lord in the kama houses okay three seven and eleven because these houses are trines they support each other they will uh, help each other so if the lagnesh is in eleventh best or seventh or even if it's a third then it can help in getting married because. third can show you have a lot of connections then you may find somebody easily the 11th house is your core friend so they can recommend somebody why don't you go and see that person so uh, so now if a person who has lagnesh in 11th or third is planning to get married so then then if there are little indications i have seen the marriage happens but if the lagnesh is not related to these houses then marriage is relatively difficult i'm not saying it's difficult in general i am saying that if it is in third or 11th it's easier all right this is what i mean to say so this is what these are the three factors then there is the fourth factor which is the karakas the karakas will give you the soul actually okay so seventh house can give you the spouse but how will be your relationship with the spouse that that should be seen from venus lifelong and also you have to try to mix it with the dashas actually because if we, uh, the seventh house is good but if venus is not good it can happen that you are married but uh, you are not very happy but if venus is badly placed and you are the seventh house is good then what it can happen uh, or let's take the opposite scenario sorry that uh, your sixth house is prominent which means it's denial of the seventh but venus is good so then it may re result in physical separation that uh, he or she has to stay in a different place because of work but uh they are well connected by mobile or whatever so this is because the karaka is good actually okay and the next principle which you should always check is the houses which are associated with that event of life that particular event so for example i am talking of marriage let's take an example so people think marriage is the second house second, uh, seventh house sorry it it is not actually seventh house seventh house is the event of wedding and married life is actually the second house because married life is actually family so therefore whenever you are talking of marriage don't only check the seventh house if if the person has a good seventh house but a bad second house then it means it's easier to get married but difficult to stay married <laughs> understand or if the person has a, a great second house and a bad seventh house it can mean it's very difficult to find somebody but the married life is good or the the conception of the family is good okay so is the same with the 11th house if the 11th house is good then it's the house of friendship so um, then you may not get support from your friends or from other seniors 11th house can mean anybody if you 
if you are there in your home, you are a man, and you if you have an elder brother, so that person is like your eleventh house. So it can happen that if the eleventh house is good, then uh, that person, your elder brother or elder sister, also it can be, they can help you in uh, uplifting your marriage. They can help you to save your marriage. Okay, if the marriage is bad. Okay, so this is how you have to check. So let's take another example of education. So. Education is seen from the fourth house, the ninth house, the fifth house, and the eleventh house. Primarily the fourth and the fifth and the ninth. Eleventh house in general for gains. So, if a person has a good fourth house, then the person can uh, uh, study properly. If the fifth house is strong, the person is very sharp. Okay, fourth house can give you stamina. The person have you seen people who can study for long hours? Fifth house can give you sharpness. You know, very quickly you understand. Oh, this is this, this is like this. Okay. Ninth house is your guru, your teacher. If you don't understand, no problem. The teacher comes and explains. Eleventh house is your friends. Your friends will explain it to you. So, who who is the one who can help you in your education? Okay, which house is better for you? The fourth, fifth, ninth, or eleventh? Okay, if the fourth and fifth is good, it is like self study. You can do more self study. Okay, the ninth is good. Then you may have self study, but the gurus will give you great guidance. Okay or some father like personality somebody like this okay. so this is how you have to understand so if you do not take all these factors into account so if you are seeing the dasha of seventh house is active and you directly make a prediction oh okay the person will get married by the end of this antar dasha but if you see that sun is not good moon is not good then the if sun is not good what will happen the person may not be able to find somebody if moon is not good the person may find but the person may not be able to connect and if Venus is good, then the person will get a feeling that eventually uh, maybe we can uh, have a good long sustained relationship. And if the Lagnesh is good, then the person will also be focused actually. Because Lagnesh will show your focus wherever you are focused. So if Lagnesh is not good, the person may get married and be happy but maybe looking around outside, you know, uh, other members of the opposite sex. So this is what can happen. So before you make blind statements like Rahu in 7th will give you extra marital affair or your spouse, you will cheat on your spouse, please check the Lagna Lord, please check the moon, please check the sun, all right? And of course, similar is with childbirth. So if you are talking of childbirth, then Jupiter is essential. Second house, fifth house, ninth house, eleventh house, these are important, all right? So do not make blanket blind predictions just by seeing one thing. Take all these things into consideration and then you see your predictions will turn out to be wonderful. And if your predictions are going wrong, then you should check the other areas which I mentioned. Maybe you have done some blunder with these principles, okay? Mm -hmm. Rather than checking, oh, Ashtak Varga is nice, Navamsha is good, you know, Lagna chart is nice, you know. But you have to be very specific. You cannot just say, uh, the Navamsha is good, so married life will be good. You cannot just say the seventh lord is good, so married life is good. You cannot, I mean, of the Lagna chart, you cannot say Venus is exalted, married life is great. You cannot make such blanket statements. Astrology is a puzzle. Everything has to fit perfectly and it fits at the end. But you have to see uh, where it will fit, which part, all right? So astrology is a puzzle. The only thing you have to know is to fit the parts properly and then perfect picture. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. and. There are many other principles which if you know, which you think has worked for you, please write it down in the comments. I would love to know it from you, all right? So if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me, please go to the website down below and I'll put some other videos on Ascendant. You can watch it here, all right? God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him.